Section 9, The Enlightenment of Shakyamuni Buddha, Part 2, Entering Nirvana As I describe what was in Shakyamuni's mind when he attained great enlightenment, I find myself reliving his experience of 2,500 years ago. It feels as if I could easily devote an entire book to this topic, which might be a worthy undertaking at another time. But for now, I will skip over 45 years of Shakyamuni's life to the day he was passing away at the age of 80. Under sal trees in Kushinagar, Shakyamuni Buddha lay on his right side, his right arm folded under his head and his left hand holding his ailing stomach. In his last moments, he could hardly speak. Some disciples whose spiritual hearts were open were able to hear Shakyamuni's inner voice and later recorded his message in the Nirvana Sutra. Now let me recall and convey his inner thoughts at that time. As Shakyamuni entered Nirvana, his thoughts turned to his life and his disciples. Since I attained the great enlightenment at the age of 35, I have sought goodness and taught the truths. But now the time has come for me to bid farewell to my physical body. Everything in this world is transient, and I have no attachment to this material form. For 45 years, I have been able to teach people the path to enlightenment and show them the right way to live as human beings. My true essence is the laws, the dharma I have taught. I must thank you, my disciples, for attending to my personal needs over the years and for helping to spread the laws. Thanks to your efforts, my order has grown to more than 5,000 monks and nuns, and there are hundreds of thousands of lay followers throughout India. Even in the face of religious persecution, you have continued to spread the laws. For this, I am eternally grateful to you, and ask only that after I am gone, you will keep working as diligently as before. Sariputra, you passed away several years ago, but I look forward to seeing you again and enjoying another of our talks knee to knee. You were such a great help to me. As the best in wisdom, you were always a good listener and made it easy for me to preach. Sometimes your seemingly silly questions made me smile, but other listeners who didn't have the courage to ask questions appreciated yours very much. Muhammad Kalyayana, although I knew it was part of your spiritual discipline, I was unable to hold back my tears when I heard that you who were known as the best in divine supernatural powers had been murdered by misguided religious zealots. I can see you approaching, riding on a shining cloud to accompany me to heaven. Mahakatyayana, you who were the best in debate, were always able to explain my teachings in a way that others could understand. Continue to sow the seeds of the Dharma in remote areas after I am gone. Go and spread my teachings in West India, beginning with the Avanti region. Subhuti, you who were the best in understanding the emptiness, never allowed yourself to become attached to material things and gain a deep understanding of my teachings and the emptiness and egolessness. Continue your diligent efforts. Anirudha, I once admonished you in an unusually strong tone because you fell asleep during one of my talks. In penance, you meditated night and day until you lost your eyesight. Fortunately, you have learned to see through your spiritual eyes, becoming known as the best in clairvoyance. You were once so young and innocent, but now I can see your hair turning gray. Purnamai Trayaniputra, as a member of the Shaka clan, you were always clever, the best in preaching the Dharma. You and the other Purna, who plans to travel west to spread my teachings, will become rivals in the best sense. Mahakasyapa, you will not be able to witness my passing and will arrive here a week late. You will be furious with Ananda, who carelessly served me poisonous mushrooms and so hastened my departure from this world. You will try to expel him from the order and will weep bitterly over my death. You who were known as the best in ascetic disciplines were always meticulous about the methods of religious practice. After my death, however, I encourage you to do away with petty rules and restrictions. Upali, you were the best in observing the precepts. You have always done your work with care, and you were courteous to everybody you met. Although you were from a lower caste, you remained undaunted and devoted yourself to spiritual discipline among others who were born aristocrats. I am proud of you. Rahula, Although you were my son, you practiced spiritual discipline privately under Sariputra. As a result, you were called the best in esoteric training. Sadly, you left this world early. 
You were expected to succeed me, and it was unfortunate to lose you so soon. I could not do anything for you as a father, but I hope you are living happily in heaven. Chivaka, celebrated doctor, you have cured my illnesses numerous times, but this time even your skills are not sufficient to heal me. All things are transient. Just as you cannot stop the flow of a river, you cannot extend my life on earth any longer. When I think of you, my beloved disciples, I can't stop thinking about what will happen to you after I am gone. Remember this, although I will be leaving this world shortly, my teachings remain on earth to be passed on for thousands of years for the nourishment of people's souls. Always keep this in mind, my disciples. My life is like the full moon in the sky. Even when it is covered by clouds and disappears from your sight, it continues to cast its light. Like the moon, my life shines forever. Life is eternal. After I am gone, use the teachings I have given you over the past 45 years as food for your souls. Live according to my teachings and let them light the path. Instead of relying on others, keep the torch of Dharma burning within you and use it to illuminate the way ahead. Stand up firmly and walk steadily. Make yourself your torchlight and live according to the laws I have taught you. They will help you improve your souls and save other souls. My disciples, these are my last words. All things in this world will pass. Complete your spiritual work without neglecting it. These were the final thoughts of Shakyamuni Buddha as he entered Nirvana.